Hello, welcome to today's seminar. Our speaker today is Zdeněk Dvořák, our uh, roughly annual visitor. <laughs> he will be speaking about asymptotic dimension of graph classes. Okay. Yeah. So, actually, most of what I will speak about is not my research. There is maybe one little result of me and Sergei Norin that I will mention in the middle. But I think it's a kind of uh, interesting topic on which there were some very beautiful results uh, done recently. So, I think it's good to speak about it. So, okay. So, how do we define? dimension of, of something like let's say of, of some metric space or whatever so I mean we kind of have some intuitive uh, idea about uh, about uh, about this like I don't know this this board is two-dimensional because I mean I can determine the position of any two any point by two coordinates uh, which is uh, actually like a little bit vague you need to well, you can you can you can define define dimension along these ways, but it takes some some effort. Uh, but uh, we will be going towards like defining dimension in graphs where you don't get any kind of nice coordinate system. So we need to go uh, for some different approach. And uh, kind of the starting point here is. Uh, uh, Lebex covering dimension. Uh, uh, there are some letters missing here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, okay, let me let me write a write a definition. So let's say we will be working for simplicity just in. Uh, just in metric spaces, although you can do this completely topologically. So uh, we will we will say that the space has uh, let's say space S has uh, this covering dimension at most D if the following is true. For every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a cover of S by C of S by open sets of uh, diameter at most epsilon. such that C can be expressed as union of these things, D plus one things, and uh, elements of each of these parts are pairwise disjoint. So that's a bit technical. So, so what does it say? So this epsilon tells us that we must be able to do this by arbitrarily small uh, small sets. And uh, the thing that we uh, that we want uh, want to do is well to cover our space by by these by these sets. Uh, the sets div uh, are divided into D plus one parts, and inside each part, things are pairwise disjoint. So let's okay. Let's do let's do an example. For example, what is a dimension of uh, of line? So dimension of line should be two, uh, should be one. So we should be dividing here into two parts. So and I will draw these sets in one part in red and the other one in blue, and we can indeed do this. So we can. Take this disjoint 
red set. So this will be, let's say, C1 and pairwise disjoint blue set. This will form C2 such that these two systems together cover the, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole line. And I can make this with arbitrarily short, uh, short intervals. So uh, this shows that the dimension is at most one. And here this, uh, this picture shows uh, that the dimension of, uh, of the plane is uh, at most two, because I can now do this with, uh, with three parts, red things, blue things, and green things where the things of the same color are pairwise disjoint and together they cover the whole plane. Okay, so this is an interesting way how to define a dimension. Uh, but uh, well, one thing is that, uh, that it is a local notion. So uh, here we want the, uh, this, this to be true at like ar arbitrarily small, uh, small scale. So uh, let me give like more complicated different examples so for instance if I if my space is let's say such a infinite chain of squares then this has dimension 2 because when I have a look at it locally it looks precisely like, uh, like the plane on the other hand if, uh, if I take let's say an infinite grid this will have dimension 1 because when i have a look at it locally it, it's 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 just a just a line and uh, okay so can we do something uh, similar in terms of graphs well i mean not really because uh, I mean, graphs are kind of discrete spaces, and uh, if you have a look at them lo locally, you will not see anything uh, anything interesting. I mean, in this sense, they, the, depending on how you look at the, at the graphs, they will have uh, dimension zero or one, and uh, you really will not get much uh, much out of this. Okay, so for graphs, it's uh, it's uh, more interesting to. Uh, to look at uh, at like large scale, like what is the dimensionality if you if you look at things from global perspective, and uh, for 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 metric spaces, uh, this was uh, introduced by uh, Gromov, uh, which is the, just the, the concept that will be interesting for us is asymptotic dimension. which is the uh, same thing, except that we want to look at, at large scale. So let me again write a definition. So S has, has, has asymptotic dimension at the most D if, And we will be looking at, at some scales, but now the scale will be, will be large. Uh, okay, let me let me first write a wrong definition, and uh, and then uh, um, so then I will I will correct it. So let's say there exists uh, a, let's say there a cover. by open sets such that okay now we will first of all we will still still want this part exactly so we will want that C is union of D plus one parts and elements of each of these parts are pairwise disjoint. <laughs> uh, 
And secondly, we will want that uh, so this, this, this cover kind of covers all uh, all balls of this size. So we will uh, we will want that for every. Matter, but let's say, let's say, open ball of uh, balls, maybe right. Let's write radius at most a. There exists some element of the cover containing this ball. Okay, so uh, there is a big problem with this, with this definition that I could always take this cover to, con uh, to consist of a, of a single element being S, and then it would cover every uh, every ball. And so we will we will need uh, one more thing. We will need. This, uh, this, this sets to be still bounded size, so there will exist some upper bound beta I mean, for for this definition, it's, it's it's interesting when a is large, so I didn't want to write epsilon there. Um, so, no matter at uh, at uh, at how how large scale I am uh, I am looking, uh, I should uh, I should get such a such a cover which captures all balls on this uh, on this uh, on this scale or in all. Sets of bounded diameter on, on this uh, on this scale, and has this property. So we can we can verify that, for example, uh, the line still has uh, asymptotic dimension uh, dimension two, because uh, we can let's say take as being something like. Three times a, and uh, I put the radius so five times a, and uh, so now you mean beta, uh, beta, yeah. And so now I can put here this uh, this uh, these uh, these things of length five times a, such that these overlaps are let's say. Two times a, something, something like that. Now every uh, every every ball of size of, of radius a will be contained in uh, in one of these uh, one of these parts. Uh, similarly, uh, for uh, for the plane, I can uh, I can increase the, uh, the size of the squares a little bit so that they overlap. They still capture. That they will now capture all the all the balls of uh, of uh, radius uh, radius. So more interesting is what uh, what happens uh, with uh, uh, with these examples. So now from the from from global perspective, this uh, this looks one dimensional. So uh, so now uh, yeah, I will be able to basically. To uh, do, do this thing, so if I make I don't know, this, this red, and then I will yeah, this should be also also blue for the next part, and so forth and so forth. In this way, I will get that this has asymptotic dimension one, which is what we would kind of expect from because it looks on the global 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 level as a one-dimensional object. And uh, this grid will have uh, uh, dimension two for, for 
I mean, this uh, this thing showed that it, it has dimension at most two, and uh, it's not hard uh, not hard to show that it, you cannot do it with dimension with, uh, with dimension one. Okay, so this is uh, a way how to uh, how to define uh, this asymptotic dimension, this dimension which is good on the large levels, the large uh, large scale, which is kind of what we want to do for graphs. And so now we will try to get. Uh, well, first, let, let's reformulate the definition in terms of graphs, and then let's see. What, uh, what dimensions we will be getting for some interesting classes of graphs. Okay. Uh, what's the best way to do it? Well, maybe, uh, maybe let me uh, do a Reform, uh, reformulation here, which I'm maybe actually, actually is actually a little bit even closer to what uh, what uh, what we had over uh, over there. So, I, I mean, instead of uh, having uh, these uh, these sets with these overlaps that enable me to catch all the balls, I can now uh, shrink the uh, shrink the sets a bit. So if I now shrink them by something like a or something like that, they will still be covering everything because I mean every uh, every ball was was uh, every ball of radius a was covered. So if I uh, uh, if I shrink the length of these intervals or the size size of these sets by by a, the center of the ball will still be covered by the by the shrunk thing, and because every ball ball was covered. Every uh, every point will be covered, and the property that we are we will be now getting is that uh, the like the blue intervals are far pairwise pairwise far far apart. The distance between them is at least two a or whatever. So another way uh, how we can get an equivalent definition uh, so we can put here the condition that the distance between the elements of uh, CI And I mean, uh, now the A is different, uh, maybe by some factor of two different than what, what it was in the other definition, but other than that, it should be fine. Okay. Um, so now, uh, now what uh, what happens if? Uh, oh yeah, let uh, let me uh, let me mention one more uh, one more thing. Uh, this uh, this uh, this condition gets harder and harder to satisfy uh, as uh, a gets uh, a gets larger. So if I have a uh, here a system of things that works for a being a thousand, it also works for a being one. Obviously, because this a is just just here. So we can uh, put here some lower bound, any lower bound, and it will still be equivalent. So it's Okay, to just let's say do it for a being at least one. Okay, so now uh, how uh, how to reformulate it? Uh, reformulate this uh, in uh, uh, in terms of uh, of uh, of, of uh, distance in graphs. I mean, you could uh, you could just take this uh, take this definition and apply it to the to the graph metric, and that's precisely what we will be working with. Uh, but uh, there is kind of a nicer or different uh, way how to view it from uh, 
from the from the graph perspective. So we can uh, so if uh, if I uh, so for uh, so for the uh, for 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 the graph so I want to divide its vertices into d plus one parts. So I basically want to color the vertices of my graph by uh, d plus one colors. And uh, so now, if I have a uh, have a look at uh, let's say at the at the uh, red vertices, these are divided. Uh, the red vertices are divided into like some some parts. And I know I I want that the distance between any two of the of the red parts is at least uh, at least a. Well, actually, let me let me write here greater than a just to make things work nicer. So. Uh, Equivalently, if uh, if I if I uh, look at the a's power of of my graph, where by this this is the graph where two vertices are adjacent if they are at distance at most a and g. Uh, this just uh, this just means that uh, these uh, these these red things are in different. Uh, like in different components of uh, of uh, of the subgraph subgraph of this induced by by the red vertices. So, uh, uh, and. Uh, I need also that uh, that this the, they have this bounded uh, bounded diameter, so these like red components must uh, must have bounded diameter in G, and it's basically the same as uh, up to factor of a. It's also the uh, the diameter in uh, in G to the a. So written this, uh, so we will we we can write that I graph G has. Symptotic dimension at most d. If uh, well, for every a there exists uh, beta such that g has oh, g to a has a coloring by d plus one colors such that each monochromatic component has diameter at most beta. So that's just a reformulation of this definition. One remark: this 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 diameter is measured by a distance in the, in this uh, in this whole graph, not inside uh, not inside the component. So in, uh, I can uh, I can have a red component which has small diameter because there is some vertex outside which is adjacent to everyone, for instance. Okay, so this is the definition for graphs. Except it only makes sense uh, for um, to to use this definition uh, for uh, for infinite graphs, because if you have a graph which has finite number of vertices, you can always take beta to be the number of vertices of of the of the graph and use just one color to to color everything, and so you don't get anything in place. 
So either we could study infinite graphs, which I don't like because I don't know anything about infinite graphs, or we can rewrite this uh, to, to work for families of graphs, for graph classes. So we will say that a graph class G has asymptotic dimension at most D if this condition holds for every graph from the class. So like the dependence of, 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 the, of the diameter on A must be the same for the, for, for the whole class of graphs. So this, this, this prevents us from setting it to be the size of the graph, for example. In particular, it's a uh, beta depends only on A and not on N, the number of vertices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, this, this beta depends on, on A and, of course, like on, on the class of graphs, but not on the, on the particular. Is this just the same as just union everything in the class, take that infinite graph, and it's the same thing? Yeah, that's, okay. uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it works out to be, to be the same, yeah. Okay, so let's see what we can say about about uh, uh, the dimension of some simple thing. So, what is the dimension of trees? So, I have my tree. And I claim that all trees have di uh, asymptotic dimension one. And uh, so how, how can you uh, do that? Well, so we need to find a, for given distance a, we need to find a good coloring using uh, using two colors, and uh, so we will do it in a natural way. So we will root the tree somewhere, and we will color the first uh, let's say a plus. Well, so that the distance works out a plus one layers. Uh, blue, then the next A plus one layers I will color red, and then the next A plus one layers I will color blue, and I claim it, uh, uh, it, uh, it this, uh, this works, so I need to, let's say, check that uh, uh, the red components have uh, bounded uh, bounded diameter by some function of a, and uh, well, if I if I if, if I have a look at the red components here and the red components in any other layer, they are they are distinct. I mean, uh, the distance from here to here is greater than a, so this will be in in different components. Uh, inside uh, inside the layer, it's a little bit more complicated. So here I have like the these red subtrees. These still can belong to the same component of this uh, of this eighth power. If uh, if there is a short pass between uh, between them like this, but I can actually tell you precisely. Uh, which uh, which of these components will be joined together like this, and it's it's easy. So you take uh, the path of length a over two going up from them here in the in this in this tree, and if this path of length a over two intersect or in fact ends in the same vertex, these. Are these form the same component? The, the distance between them is uh, uh, is well, at most a, 
if they end up in a different vertex, well then the distance between them, well, they, they, they are only joined along this unique path in, in the tree, so the distance is greater than A. So this, well, this is one monochromatic component, and now we see that here, here the distance is at most A, here it's also at most A, here it's also at most A, so we will be able to take beta something like 3A, maybe plus 1, plus 2, whatever. Okay, so by this argument, uh, you get that uh, trees have a synthetic dimension at most one. And uh, uh, there was a recent very interesting paper by um, uh, Mars Bonami. Uh, Nicholas, uh, Carla, Groenland, I don't know, well, it's actually red. who proved that this is actually true for uh, for any uh, class with bounded tree width. So if you take class of graphs of, for any fixed k, if you take class of graphs of tree with at most k, uh, it will uh, it will have uh, again just a simple three dimension one. If you don't know what is a three base, I will probably not be able to explain it to you at this at this talk. But okay, let me let me try. So, uh, so how how do you how how do you, how do you create a tree? So you start with a root, and then you to a single vertex attach an edge. And then again to single vertex attach an edge, and then perhaps to another vertex to attach an edge, and you continue growing a tree like this as long as you want until you get the tree that you that you want by adding leaves. For for three of this, you do uh, a similar thing, except now you uh, start let's say with with an with an edge. And then you keep attaching triangles. So on this edge, I can attach a triangle, and then on this edge, I can attach a triangle, and then perhaps on this edge, I can attach another triangle, and so on. And so in this way, I am growing uh, some graph, which in this case it's called a two tree. And the graphs of three ways at most two are precisely subgraphs of two trees. And in general, if you keep attaching cliques of size so k plus one, you will be getting k plus one trees, and their subgraphs are graphs of three ways at most k plus one. And uh, these are these are interesting because uh, because they have a lot of uh, applications in graph theory and uh, uh, and. Uh, uh, design of algorithms and uh, okay so let's see now what uh, what we can say about uh, about planar graphs actually using uh, using this uh, this result that the asymptotic dimension is one for bounded tree width you can easily show uh, that planar graphs have asymptotic dimension at most three and the way you do it is you know something similar that we did for, for the trees. So you start from a vertex and now divide it into layers of 
multiply of size roughly a so that whatever you do in this layer doesn't affect what you do in this layer. And now you observe that if you take a bounded number of layers in a planar graph, uh, this, uh, this subgraph induced here will have bounded trivis. So now you can use, uh, use this result and color this layer using two colors, let's say blue and red in a way which is good for, for the definition of the asymptotic dimension and you can again use colors blue and red here and you can use a different set of two colors brownish and green in this layer and this layer and so in this way you get a good coloring using four colors so this shows that planar graphs have asymptotic dimension at most three but if you uh, do more work as these authors did, they can also show that the asymptotic dimension of planar graphs is at actually at most two. It's actually exactly two, which is which is nice, which is kind of what you would uh, what you would expect. I mean, planar graphs should have naturally dimension two if you have a good notion of dimension. And uh, actually, they proved uh, something uh, more general. So they have the same result for graphs on, drawn on any fixed surface. And uh, actually, even more generally, for any proper minor closed family of graphs. Still two for the yeah. So this is uh, again kind of nice because if you know the structure theorem for minor closed graph classes, then you know that all of these are kind of glued together from things which are close to being drawn on a fixed surface. So from this perspective, it, it again is very natural that they have uh, asymptotic dimension uh, dimension one. So actually, I mean, this, this is probably like the, the highlight, like this is the, from my perspective, like the most interesting result that I'm mentioning in this talk. Uh, let me tell you a couple more, couple more results. So, uh, okay, so what are, uh, what are like graph classes uh, which, uh, which don't have uh, small asymptotic dimension. So it's easy to see that if you take the class of all graphs, it will have uh, uh, an infinite uh, asymptotic dimension, unbounded asymptotic dimension, but that's not very interesting. A more interesting example is if you take uh, the asymptotic dimension of uh, any class of expanders with bounded maximum degree. And mm -hmm. by, by expander, uh, I mean that these, these are graphs in which it is true that whenever you take any set of vertices, <laughs> which is of size less than half of the total number of vertices, you have a look at, the, at, at its neighborhood, it, uh, it will uh, contain like at least constant, like the size will be at least constant fraction of, of the size of your set. So for every, for every set S containing at most half of the vertices, the size of the neighborhood of S will be at least some constant times size of S. So if you have a look at 
like the consecutive neighborhood or neighborhoods of, uh, of a starting set, uh, they will grow exponentially fast. So, uh, in particular, um, expanders have uh, a logarithmic uh, logarithmic uh, diameter, so every kind of everything is close to close to everything and. Um, I mean, this, this shows that they are kind of very well connected. Again, something that, uh, that indicates that it's very natural that, that the dimension for them turns out to be to be infinite. But the epsilon bigger than one? Uh, bigger than zero. Bigger than. There is this open neighborhood for yeah, for close neighborhood you would want bigger than one. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, so another kind of interesting, uh, interesting family of graphs are uh, those with uh, polynomial growth. So we will say that a class of graphs G has uh, polynomial growth of degree D if there exists some polynomial P of degree D. Whenever you take a graph from this class, and whenever you take the vertex of this graph, and any radius, uh, the number of uh, vertices of G at a distance at most R from V will be bounded by this polynomial of R. So if you have a look how fast the neighborhoods around the vertex grow, it's a by a polynomial function of the distance. So standard example is if you take a grid, then if you have a look at what is uh, what is the neighborhood at, uh, at the distance r, then in this grid it will be something something like something like this, and it's easy to see that. The number number of vertices reachable that you reach is on the order of r squared. So you get that in the, in the grid in d-dimensional space, as it will have um, uh, growth poly, uh, polynomial growth of, of degree of degree d. And uh, actually, it turns out that uh, the example of grids is. Uh, Kind of the universal here. Uh, Krausgammer <coughs> and uh, Lee proved uh, that uh, any uh, graph of polynomial growth of degree d is in fact a uh, subgraph of a grid in dimension d times log d. And uh, I mean, it's uh, it's easy to see that uh, uh, infinite uh, these, these grids in dimension D have asymptotic dimension D, and therefore uh, this uh, this shows uh, that uh, graphs with uh, polynomial growth of degree D have uh, asymptotic dimension at most d log d. Actually. Uh, if you have a look at the, at the proof of Krauss, Gamma, and Lee, uh, one of their lemmas imp actually implies uh, that uh, they have uh, asymptotic dimension linear in D. And uh, recently there was a paper by I'm not misspelling this, uh, who has shown 
uh, that uh, that these have uh, asymptotic dimension uh, at most, uh, actually at most d plus one, I think. So very close to very close to the maybe even the I didn't didn't read the paper, so <laughs> just judging by what what he wrote in, writes in the abstract, I think that should show d plus one, but something very very close to this. Uh, Okay, uh, maybe let me mention uh, <laughs> my result so that I, 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 I tell something that, uh, that, uh, that, we, uh, that we did. Uh, so this is a uh, result of myself and uh, Sergei Norin, which says that if you take uh, intersection graphs, balls in R to the D, then uh, these have uh, asymptotic dimension at most 2D minus 1. So if you take any system of balls and you join two of them by an edge uh, if and only if uh, they, they intersect, then uh, this will have bounded asymptotic dimension. And let me remark that here, I mean, in this uh, in this way, you can of, of course represent graphs which contain contain large cliques or or like this. But that's not not a problem for for asymptotic dimension. The balls can have different radius. The balls can have arbitrary radius. And in fact, you don't need even need to have balls, just things that kind of look like balls, I probably don't want to give an exact definition. Things of bounded uh, aspect ratio, let's say, work. Okay, so, uh, and there are like, like more... Be like a lower bound on how small the balls can be, then this should be dimension D, right? If you have... Is well, if you... Be if the same you, as RD? Uh, yeah, if you, have, if you have a bound on the ratio between the size of the largest and smallest ball, it's, uh, it's, it's D. Okay, good. Uh, and, I mean, we don't have an, any example that would, that would show that it's uh, greater than the, even if you con consider larger balls. So it could, in principle, be uh, media just by our, our, our proof method. Our proof method basically reduces it to uh, D times what you get from this, uh, from this Trevis case. And because in the Trevis case you are getting coloring by two colors, we are, we are getting this here. This. Minus one. Okay, so let me uh, let me maybe stop with an open question. Uh, so we have uh, we have seen here like a lot of examples of, of uh, graph classes which have uh, bounded uh, asymptotic dimension, and one interesting property of let's say planar graphs. Is that they have sublinear separators that uh, you can break a planar graph into two parts which are of roughly the same size by removal of roughly square root of n vertices. And uh, this is kind of an opposite property to being expanders. Expanders are basically graphs where you don't get any uh, separators of uh, sublinear size. And uh, so this uh, that is corresponding to a question whether whether every uh, every uh, every class graph class with sublinear separators. Every subgraph closed class have bounded finite uh, asymptotic dimension. This I think would be very nice to know. I'm not sure whether I believe it, but could be true. 
Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jimmy. Does this come from something? Or is it just like a set? Like, I know that our logic friends care a lot about, you know, polynomial growth versus exponential growth in terms of, like, looking at Cayley graphs that are amenable to groups. I mean, uh, does this, like, does this apply to this study of, like, amenable or non-amenable groups? Like, in what yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean this, this asymptotic dimension was, uh, was first introduced by Gromov in, in, in the study of group theory. So if you uh, apply, apply this notion to some... Uh, Cayley graphs derived from uh, from from the groups. We made something interesting with it, but uh, I mean, in the in the in the graph theory, I, I think like, well, I don't know like many like uh, very interesting applications. I know some small things, uh, but I think like for, for us the main main appeal is that it is a notion of dimension which behaves on various natural graph classes in the way that uh, that we would like like it to so it feels like it's nice natural notion so. but the logicians have like a real use for it that, that's what i'm just gonna yeah I, well i don't know about logics um, uh, the people in the in the in the group theory did something with it but i i have no idea what okay it. So. That's okay. That's okay. is that uh, the Thing with sublinear separators, are there other classes that don't have sublinear separators and have bounded dimension? Oh um, yeah, or I mean, let's different. say if you take, if you take well, these, um, or if you take, uh, for, for instance, if, if you take the class of cliques, well, the cliques have uh, okay. asymptotic dimension zero because everything is at a distance one from sure. everything else. So. Okay, okay, I yeah, but uh, but yeah, I mean, for for sparse graph classes, it, this would be, uh, I mean, essentially a, an exact characterization. So. Okay. Let's say Zdeněk again. <laughs>